Uh, yes, a very pleasant good morning, children. So today we are going to like uh, uh, continue with the poem, Amanda, though we discussed its theme and uh, we discussed, you people told me what this poem is all about on the basis of what you people were able to make out. So yes, it's a very simple poem, but yes, with a deep meaning. So often it's Amanda, Amanda, you, the protagonist, the main character of this poem. She's an adolescent like you people all are. Okay, adolescent is a child who is neither a small child nor is actually a very grown up fellow. So what adolescents usually, you know, keep on, uh, uh, they keep on struggling to find a place for themselves in the world. Like how, what kind of struggle do they have? Like neither are they able to establish themselves as a small child, nor are they able to establish themselves as an adult. And uh, even the parents or even the grown-up, the world of grown-ups keep on, uh, you know, uh, underestimating them or even try to snub them with what they expect their lives to be what. So usually these adolescents, you know, uh, they are snubbed by the aspirations or the high ambitions of the parents. And usually these children are not able to, these adolescents are not able to express themselves they are not able to find, uh, they are not able to establish the world of fantasy, which has been, which has been with them uh, with the right from their childhood. So the world of fantasy is the world of imagination, which is a big part of their life, you know, right from their childhood. Uh, that is something which is inseparable from these children, from these adolescents. And uh, the fact is like children should not be, uh, you know, uh, snubbed to the extent that they forget their world of fantasy. Uh, the child, the children should be allowed to live with their fantasies, with their imaginations, because that is what makes children grow up that. So let them be uh, comfortable with their world of fantasy so that they are able to establish themselves very, very uh, profoundly in this world of reality. Okay. So that world helps them settle. Otherwise, uh, children find themselves out of place. Uh, you people will see uh, that uh, uh, in this poem, you know, you might have already seen, you have already told me also, like the children, uh, here Amanda is an adolescent child who is being constantly nagged by her mother for one or the other thing. And it happens. Uh, Okay, when she is nagged for one or the other thing, initially, how does she respond to that nagging attitude of a mother? Initially, she remains quiet. She uh, doesn't respond much. She doesn't overreact. But yes, uh, she keeps uh, she keeps withdrawn in her own world of fantasy, and she uh, decides to be there as it is. But slowly and gradually, uh, you know, uh, yes, she starts reacting also. How does she react to that uh, nagging attitude of her mother? That you people will tell me by the end of this point. So let's see, don't bite your nails, Amanda. So don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. So here uh, the words like Amanda has been repeated three times. So repetition in the very first instance, the word, the, when a word is repeated straight away for more than one or two times, we call it repetition. It's also a poetic device, right? Repetition is here. Amanda has been repeated. Then the poet says, don't bite your nails. Don't hunch your shoulders. So even the word don't has been repeated in the beginning of the poem. In the beginning of these first and second lines, the word don't has been repeated. So it is an anaphora, A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. So anaphora is a poetic device where a word is repeated in the beginning of the line. A word is repeated in the beginning of the lines. So don't word. Two sentences of the first stanza, they start with don't, don't. So it's an anaphora. Anaphora is a poetic device in which a word is repeated in uh, two or more lines. And uh, the, these lines, don't do this, don't do that, stop that. These words show the nagging attitude of the mother. Uh, mother who is scolding her daughter, who is respecting her daughter's freedom. So when Amanda might have been seen biting her nails, mother is uh, uh, telling her not to do this. 
when amanda is sitting in a relaxed position um, uh, thereby uh, bending forward uh, mother is again there to uh, tell her not to do that so when uh, she is relaxing when he is she is uh, you know in a comfortable uh, position mother is again there to uh, you know respect her freedom and tell her like don't sit like this sit up straight so these are all things don't bite your nails don't hunch your shoulders don't hunch your shoulders means don't bend low don't bend uh, don't stoop too much slouching is a lazy way the way you sit lazily so she tells her mother tells her to sit, don't tells her not to sit lazily and uh, commands her to sit up straight so these commanding uh, instructions by mother how do how do they affect amanda let's see there is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissfully so there is a languid emerald sea languid is what like uh, which is going on and on slowly and gradually lazily emerald is a green sea sole is the only inhabitant is the one who lives over there dwellant uh, the one dweller mermaid is a sea creature um with the, the bottom part like a fish and upper part like a woman drifting is being uh, you know carried blissfully happily so the first stanza was something which was uh, like spoken by mother and second stanza is what the girl you know imagines this is girl's imagination so here amanda is imagining herself to be like a to be a, like a mermaid she imagines herself to be like a mermaid who is all alone in a beautiful green sea in a vast beautiful green sea she is all alone and there she is being carried away by the sea waves happily and there she is living a blissful happy life a life of uh, solitude a life of uh, quietude a life of you know a uh, happiness a life of beauty so where in a reality the mother is, the girl is living a life of uh, you can say chaos uh noise uh nobody is actually making noise around her but only the mother who is nagging her constantly that nagging attitude of a mother is no less than uh, you know a big noise for her and she, actually she wants to be away from this you know then and noise and wants to be in a calm and tranquil and uh, you know beautiful sea where she would be carried away by the waves without any noise without any interruption because she would be sole inhabitant because she would be the only dweller of that sea as a mermaid so she imagines her life to be like a mermaid which is away from the din and noise of this house where her mother is constantly nagging her for doing something or the other but in the sea no one will be there to interrupt her or respect her freedom and she will be free to move along the waves which waves the the waves of the sea which are the which is green sea is green in color so emerald is actually a green stone so how can the sea be emerald because its water looks green so the emerald sea is actually a metaphor okay the where the sea has been compared to an emerald that is a green color because of its green color it has been compared to an emerald so here is a metaphor so soul in, who is a soul inhabitant this girl will be the soul inhabitant in the in the sea because no one else will be there to disturb her in her solitude or in her tranquility she'll be enjoying a blissful life away from the humdrum of life where would not where her mother would not be there to constantly nag her so this is simple stanza where she imagines herself to be a mermaid uh, in a um, in an emerald sea being drifted blissfully these things all show her rich imagination these things all show like how vivid her imagination is she is able to imagine herself in a beautiful sea uh, being carried away by the beautiful sea waves so this is this imagination uh, you know <clears throat> is very very important for a child's growth okay in order uh, if you want the child to find place in this world you should let the child have a rich imagination because as rich the imagination of a child is 
that that creative that innovative he becomes when he starts growing up on his or her own so imagination is very important for creativity <clears throat> so did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda so here is again now it's another time once she would uh, instruct her not to bite her nails or not to sit with hunched back not to sit lazily this that but and in other times she would instruct her uh, she would inquire if she had done her work or if she would inquire if she had cleaned up her room uh, she would inquire if she had cleaned her shoes also so the nagging attitude of mother would never ever come to an end she is constantly nagging her daughter did you finish your homework did you tidy your room so here again anafara did the words did have been used in two lines that both of the first and second line they start with the same word that is did so it's an anafara and second uh, the word amanda has again been repeated it is repetition right so again the nagging attitude of the of the mother is being seen then what's the reaction of the mother of the girl i am an orphan roaming the street i pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet so now the girl is imagining herself to be like an orphan girl who is roaming who is wandering around the streets so what a, uh, what kind of life an orphan lives the orphan doesn't have to the orphan is a child who has no parents and uh, though it's not really good on part of a child to imagine oneself to be like an orphan but here uh, uh, the child is not sounding very serious the child is only imagining herself to be the one who is free from all restrictions and uh, and uh, the and the one who can move about freely in the streets see where the mother is so particular about uh, her cleaning the shoes cleaning her room and all there the girl actually imagines herself to be making designs with her bare feet she imagines herself to be bare uh, to be there without slippers without shoes and uh, she wishes to draw designs on the sand with her with her shoes with her feet silence the silence is golden the freedom is sweet so silence where silence the reality is mother is never silent mother is always creating fuss about one thing or the other so the girl imagines this uh, silence to be golden silence to be as glorious as a uh, uh you know uh, beautiful as shiny like a golden like a gold golden is actually color golden color so how can silence be of golden color it's only a metaphor where silence has been compared to golden color because silence is also glorified okay and freedom is sweet freedom is a, freedom uh, you cannot uh, taste freedom but yes you can imagine freedom to be as sweet as uh, any anything which is sweet so freedom is also you know sweet so here metaphors like silence and freedom have been uh, these words have been uh, you know uh, used as metaphors where the uh, where this girl has been shown as imagining herself to be like an orphan who is living a life of freedom uh, and silence where she would not have to bother about wearing the shoes and uh, uh, keeping her room tidy or to keep her shoes tidy because she would be moving about with bare feet upon the streets uh, and uh, she would be free to make the designs upon the dust with her bare feet so see when her mother was asking her to clean the shoes and room then the girl is imagining herself to be moving about with bare feet uh, on the sands so what she imagines and what her mother is constantly nagging her about see the contrast but even then despite that nagging attitude of the mother the girl is able to imagine the girl is able to fantasize a world for herself where there is freedom where there is you know uh, silence where there is you know uh, beauty of her own thoughts <clears throat> right so don't eat that chocolate amanda remember your acne will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you amanda so uh, now the mother is again there to talk about other things now amanda is being uh, restricted from eating too many chocolates the point is that uh, she says that uh, the chocolates cause 
too many pimples. So she must restrict herself from eating chocolates in abundance. And at the same time, mother has, uh, you know, uh, observed that that when she is instructing her daughter about one thing or the other, Amanda doesn't even look at her. So she tells her to look at her when I'm speaking to you. So this also shows that number one, uh, the mother knows that Amanda has got quite irritated. Amanda is quite upset with her nagging attitude. She knows that this, that Amanda, that her nagging attitude is not acceptable to Amanda. Even then, mother goes on and on with one thing or the another to instruct Amanda about. So again here, Amanda word has been repeated. That is the repetition. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you? Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you? So here, please, me speaking, here E sound has been repeated, right? So it is an assonance. Assonance is a poetic device where the vowel sounds are repeated. Alliteration is when there is a repetition of a sound in the consecutive words. For example, in stop that slouching and sit up straight. Here, sir sound, sir, stop sir, slouching sir, sit sir, straight sir. So here in the third line, stop that slouching and sit up straight, that was an alliteration, A-L-L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I-O-N. So in the third line, alliteration was used because that was a sir sound which was prominently used by the poet. Okay, sit up. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. So here, the what's the purpose of alliteration? Alliteration is a poetic device in which there is a repetition of the same sound in, a, uh, in the consecutive words. And what's the purpose of alliteration over here? Purpose is that the mother goes on and on. She doesn't stop. Her nagging, her scolding doesn't stop. Don't do this, don't do that, stop that, st uh, do this, sit up this. So here, there is, a, uh, there is a spontaneity in the scolding attitude of the mother. Constancy in the uh, scolding attitude of mother that shows through the alliteration. The poetic devices, children, they are used not uh, for the heck of it. The, po the poetic devices are used to uh, convey uh, the theme of the poem also. Is that clear? So uh, we were talking about the poetic devices. Stop that slouching. Here is an alliteration. <clears throat> uh, even don't hunch your shoulders. Even which sound is repeated over here? Don't hunch your shoulders. O sound is being repeated here. O is a vowel. And the, when there is a repetition of the vowel sound, we call it assonance. A-S-S-O-N-A-N-C-E. -S -S -E. Please make note side by side. After the moment, last stanza would finish, I'll ask you what is assonance, what is consonance. Consonance is when there is a repetition of the uh, consonant sound. And assonance is when there is a repetition of the vowel sound. Alliteration is when there is the uh, repetition of the uh, consonant sound at the beginning of the word. For example, sir, 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 that was alliteration. O, o sound is repeated inside the words. Okay, when there is some vowel sound repeatedly used in a sentence, we call it assonance. <clears throat> okay, so this the last sentence, I don't eat that chocolate and all. So they are here, again, mother was scolding his daughter, her daughter for one thing or the another. But at the same time, mother also knows that the girl is not listening to her. Even then she goes on and on. I'm Rapunzel, I have not a care. Life in a tar is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. So shall I ask anyone the story of Rapunzel? How many of you know the story of Rapunzel? Raise hand, please. Rapunzel is a fairy tale which you people might have read. Uh, by the time you people were in uh, first, second standard, by the time second standard children are, they, they know who Rapunzel is. So only Prabhgun? No one else knows who uh, the story of Rapunzel, Rabgun, Jyotsarup also knows, Arshin also knows, okay. Four children have raised hands. What about others? Five children have raised, Kushi also knows. Yes, Mishti also knows. I'll ask anyone, don't just raise hand for 
Okay, who else knows the story of Rapunzel? Six children have raised hands. Nana, Arshin, Khushi, Prabhun, Jyotsarup, Mishti. What about others? Many of the girls might have been purchasing, Chayank also knows, good. Many of the girls might have been purchasing their pencil boxes or of bags of a pencil. At least all of you might be knowing the story of a pencil by this time. And very famous story of a pencil, very famous. Only seven children know this. Okay, let's ask what the story is about. Eight children have raised hand. Parth also knows. So let's ask Parth. Parth, unmute yourself. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, good morning, Parth. Yes, Parth, tell us the story of Rapunzel in brief. Um, Rapunzel was a princess who had very long and magical hairs, hmm. which has hmm. trapped him in his house. Okay. A, and a prince released him from there. Yes. Okay, Parth. Is this correct? Okay, yes, that much is correct, but uh, you didn't finish off very nicely. But anyways, you know this much. Okay. Okay, Nana, you tell us. Come on, Nana. Good afternoon, Nana. Anji, good afternoon, Nana. Rapunzel is a princess who was kidnapped from a palace by a witch. Hmm. She had golden long magical hair. And she was locked in a tower by a, by the witch. Hmm. The witch didn't tell her about her origins and uh, told her that th she was her mother only and wanted to protect her from the world, which was very cruel to her. Hmm. And she didn't let Rapunzel out. Hmm. Uh, every on on her every birthday, Rapunzel watched uh, the light the lights in the sky and wanted to go out but she wasn't allowed by her mother mm. so on her 18th or 16th birthday she escaped with the help of a thief mm. who was also trying to escape from his partners mm. was uh, running away from her home and wanted to watch lights mm. uh, she got to know about her real past and her real parents and then okay. she fought with her so-called mother and reunited with her parents okay that's great nana well done silent clap for her you all can clap for her uh, okay this much is enough for, from nana okay now my question is like in the poem uh, yes all of you can clap for her only kushi has clapped you all can clap for nana only kushi clapped now diti has clapped okay prabhun has also Tarundeep, Parshin, Parth, Prabhnu, no. So the point is that you all can clap for somebody who does something nice. <clears throat> clap and let the clap be there. Yes, Ankita. Yes, Mishti. Aditi, yes. Karanjoti, you can, Karanjoti, you can clap for the one who spoke the story. Okay. Yes, Saksham, you can also clap. Tarundi PS, okay, well done. Pushkar Jagi has also clapped at least. Jayadate, you can clap at least for somebody. Okay, Saksham, thank you. Keshav, thank you. Parth, thank you. Okay, Karanjot is still not there, I guess. Let me ask him. Karanjoti, yes. Are you there? Karanjot. Karanjot, are you there? So no idea, Karanjot. No, how can I go back? Yeah. Yes, thank you, children. Thank you, Nana. So my question still is there. I wanted to ask you, like when she says that I am Rapunzel, I'm not, I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. What makes this girl imagine herself to be Rapunzel? Do you think here, uh, you might have already seen that uh, as per the story, Rapunzel was kidnapped and was kept in the tar, okay? Somewhere in the seas. The tar was somewhere in the sea. It was, an, it was a lonely tar, 
nobody was around that and uh, in that arc she was all alone and uh, this girl imagines herself to be like a rapunzel because she thinks because this amanda thinks that rapunzel might have been living a very beautiful peaceful uh, life in that tower because she was all alone because she was away from her parents she was not there her mother was not there always to nag her to or to scold her so she says that uh, she uh, if i am a if i am rapunzel i am no i have not a care means i don't have to bother for, about anything as rapunzel she could do anything what she wanted because she was all alone there and she imagines that the life in tar in that tar would have would have been very peaceful it would have been a very rare kind of life which not many children have because most of the children they are to they have to live with their parents or if not with parents and they have to live with somebody or the other and it's very very rare that somebody lives in a tar in in a tar like rapunzel i'll certainly never let down my bright hair that's the main thing and she knows that uh, the rapunzel was in trouble because of the, her long hair because a witch would climb up the um, uh tar with her long hair only which she had let down right through the tar and she says that she would never let her hair down so that no one would be able to reach her so here is a little uh, variation a little change she doesn't want to be like a rapunzel why because she ne would never let her hair fall down from the tar so that no one reaches her so she wishes if she were like rapunzel if she were like a rapunzel life in a tar is tranquil and rare what is tranquil very peaceful okay something which which is very very peaceful that is tranquil okay care rare these are all rhyming words i'll certainly never let down my bright hair i'll never let my hair fall from the tar so up till here rapunzel uh, this girl was able to imagine uh, whenever the mother would be scolding her her counter action would be imagination instead of saying something instead of arguing with her mother she would only fall in her world of fantasy and she would fantasize sometimes she would fantasize the world of a sea or of a mermaid then she would fantasize the world of an orphan then she would fantasize the world of a pencil and finally stop that sulking at once amanda you're always so moody anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda so finally when mother goes on and on and tells her not to be sulking at once what is sulking behavior sulking behavior is when you are annoyed but you don't let anyone know it when you don't talk about the reason of your annoyance when you don't talk about uh, the reason of your uh, agitation when you just prefer to be quiet even when you are very upset that is sulking attitude and the sulking attitude comes up when you are near depression or you are when you are very very upset when you think that uh, talking to somebody will not help you out that is sulking attitude so stop that sulking at once amanda so mother is uh, mother has been able to make out that uh, amanda has something in her mind but she is not speaking out but even then she is there to scold her for that you are always so moody amanda so what is being moody when when do the children become when do the children become moody when they are not able to find pace with their uh, emotions when they think like what they think will not be listened by the parents then they become moody sometimes they happen to be very happy sometimes they are very uh, uh, sad so that is moody attitude so mother scolds her for not being uh, for not for not to be sulking or moody uh, not to be unstable in her attitude because she thinks that uh, when uh, anyone would think that i nagged at you manda why is mother telling her not to behave like this because she thinks that people will say that mother is very uh, you know mother keeps on scolding you she says that people will say that i keep on scolding you so don't behave like this so the point is mother knows that the child has uh, uh, fallen in some trouble and she knows the reason for this even then uh, she doesn't want her child to be like that so that she is not blamed for that mother doesn't want to be blamed for being a nagging mother when the reality is that she is a nagging mother that is the uh, you know hypocritic attitude of the adults that is the tragedy uh, which you know many children have to suffer 
that their parents uh, say something and don't actually believe in that yeah it happens so how many of you felt like yeah it happens with me also it happens with me also how many of you felt like that come on raise hands the bell has gone but i would like to see how many of you felt like yes this happens with me also come on raise hands hmm how many of you identify your identify yourself with amanda raise hands and don't hide feelings it happens with many many children 90% children feel the same thing 90% i'm saying 10% might be very lucky because their parents might not be ever scolding them that is very very rare okay anyways uh now this is a time for us to leave and children yes uh, the poem has almost finished go through the questions and if you are able to write those answers very well if not we can discuss them tomorrow okay okay thank you children okay. <clears throat> i'm not finding uh, yes you can leave on your own you can join your next class thank god